You can put pressure on me, sure. not on them. Have I put pressure on you today? No. <laughs> and the left one is called Igor's bar. Oh, it's dedicated no way. to me. Oh, you? How old I am? <laughs> See, I was first foreign player to become a captain in the Premier League. I'm trying to be kind of a father to them. For four years, every interview, I received the question, yeah. what after Sunil? You get this half an hour and <laughs> it was not easy to find it. It was a mystery why I decided to come over here. Yeah, it's 1 p.m. and uh, you told me that you've already had your morning coffee, but can I offer you another one? If you, if no, like. thank you. No, no. Just no, to limber no. up a bit. It's a fasting get... day for me. Yeah, you were telling me you fast every Friday. What's what's yes. that about? It's about uh, health and and the spirit. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. So it keeps me fit and I clean my body. Yeah. Talking of keeping fit, I was there at the training session the other day, and uh, I could tell that you were a very good player, even though I never saw you play. I was too young when you were playing in the 98 World Cup, but uh, I oh saw God, you... how old I am. <laughs> That's fine, we won't reveal your age. But we saw you bending in a few of those free kicks. Yeah. Uh, and I promise I'll share the video with you soon. But reflect a bit on your playing career first with me, Gaffer, because uh, you played in the 98 World Cup, <coughs> finished third with Croatia in that World Cup. Oh, it started long earlier, yeah. you know. My, my, my debut was at 1985 when I was... 18 year old boy and Yugoslavian league at that time it was no Croatia it was Yugoslavia communist yeah. country you know yeah. it was very difficult to enter the senior team because at that time in Yugoslavia the rule for the players was that they cannot leave the country prior to 28 years of age so you can imagine the competition which was going on and happening in the league and for us youngsters it was really difficult you you should have enormous quality and the strength to enter the team and I made it, you know, it was not easy. I left my home when I was 16. My parents didn't want to let me go when I was 14 year old. It was too early for me. They decided not to let me go to join Hajduk Split Academy, which at that time was one of the best football yeah. academies in the world. Yeah. And then I waited another two years to fulfill my dreams. But from there to fulfill the dreams, Another seven, eight years of pain, of sacrifice, of suffering, challenges, doubts, all what one young player going through yeah. who dedicates his life to sport. Yeah. And I made it and I'm proud of, of myself and my parents, everyone in my family for supporting me, yeah. grateful. It was not easy, but somehow we can enjoy certain benefits today, sure. you know and after my career. What are some of <coughs> your most cherished memories of your playing career? Be it playing with other players or personal achievements? Well, it was definitely being a captain in my native club, Hajduk Split, for many years, you know, playing more than 250 games for them, scoring nearly 30 goals as a centre-back. Mm -hmm. Then uh, leading Derby County, I was first foreign player to become a captain in a Premier League in one foreign club. You know, and great memories going back there at that time from 95 to 99 when I was wearing Derby County shirt. Yeah. We won promotion in my first season there with a 20 game unbeaten run. And that was unbelievable and I'm proud now because at Derby County Stadium, the new one, Pride Park Stadium, you have uh, only two restaurants which are dedicated to their most famous football players and is and one of them one on the vip corner is dedicated to roy mcfarland who right. was the captain of the golden generation of derby county yes. who won the championship in 70s <clears throat> and the left one is called igor's bar oh it's dedicated no to me so to achieve such things in four years to to enter the best 11 of the history of the club yeah. the club which was which started his life in 1884 something precious you know yeah. although the, the memories go back to 1987 when we became world champions under 20 with yugoslavia yes, yes. and that generation was actually actually the, the base for the croatian success in the future because at the starting 11 of that world cup generation were six croatians i was one of them you know yeah 
Tell me about some of the <coughs> names you coached after that, uh, Gaffer. Oh my God, you, you, you can just pick players from Croatian national team. Yeah, Luka yeah. Modric, Ivan Rakitic, Ivan Perisic, you know, all these boys and extremely proud. I gave debut to Mateo Kovacic. He was yeah. an 18-year-old boy and, you know, what a, player, a, huh? a little bit of skepticism always goes on when, when uh, uh, people see the, the team sheet, you know, before the game and then such an important game we play against Serbia at home. You, that's, you know, it's India, Pakistan one. is something different, <laughs> yeah. but this is even worse. You think so? No, this is even worse, believe me. <laughs> in, in what way? In what way? In, in a way that there is enormous animosity and the war happened, yeah. you know, and we suffered a lot through yeah. the war. And then you go into the war practically yeah. on the battlefield the, the pitch of, becomes, for sport. Yeah, yeah. And you put 18 year old boy there. You can imagine reactions, but I could I could clearly see that at 18 year of age, Mateo Kovacic was matured enough to take responsibility and provide, provide on the pitch. And yeah. that was it. Since then he was flying. And <coughs> what are your relationships with them now? Are you still in touch with the likes of Kovacic? Oh, Kovacic? I was talking to many of them yesterday, just. Is there any curiosity that for example, they have about Indian football since you've been here since 2019. Do they text you? Do they ask you about how you're doing over here? How the national team is doing? What What do you share with yeah, them? Yeah, of course, they, they ask. It's interesting for them, you know, and it was a mystery why I decided to come over here. And you, you can tell us as well, because I, I was curious to know <laughs> about what your motivations were yeah. joining uh, as head coach. That of the was national actually team. the question which our sports psychologist put to me yesterday. You know, and, uh, yes, yeah. and I, I told him, you know, I was I was having break from football for a few months, maybe six, seven months, and at the time when I decided to go back to to management, the first offer came from India. Yeah, you know, would you be interested? And at first I said, oh my God, India. What kind of football is there? They are mm. nowhere on the map of food. Mm. But then I went into research <clears throat> and I could clearly see that that something is happening there. Something better, you know, something different. And then the size of the challenge was what attracted me. Because it's easy to go into an organized club and coach. It's easy when you have finished players sure. when you have all these things on your disposal which is needed for one manager to succeed and as it was the first offer i didn't want to wait anymore okay. i went for it okay i came here for the interview the technical committee was impressed with what i had to say and that was it they, that's how it started but then the headaches started no, i'm sure every <laughs> job comes with its own <clears throat> fair share of headaches but yeah. does the responsibility of the job ever dawn on you? My, my soul is, is clean and I, I can go sleep every night with yeah. peace yeah. in my soul, you know, because I do everything in regards to my job by the book. Everything. I, I, and we all do make mistakes. Of course, we are human beings, but in a positive way. Talking with the boys, what is your relationship with them like and what would you like it to be like? I'm trying to be kind of a father to them mm. in regards to giving them advices, in regards to helping them to improve in each aspect of their life as a human beings, as a players, as a sportist, in everything and trying to be their friend. But there is certain line where I don't want to cross yeah. this. I cannot be their best friend. And yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. that's that's simple as that. And how do you manage that? How do you maintain that power distance? I keep that distance. Keep the distance. Yeah. They will always see that I'm wearing the smile on my face, that I'm humbled and good to them until the certain line, yeah. you know. And if I see that some of them are not committed enough and all that, they cannot be here. Yeah. And what's the culture like? Are the <coughs> players free to knock on your door and have a chat with you at any point of time? Everyone here in our camp knows that from the very first day, my room door is always open. Always. Right. I never close the door. So whoever has got any need to speak with me, 
He just knocks and enters. Yeah. Now, Gaffer, you've had such a illustrious playing career. You've also coached some of the biggest. Yes, we have Mr. Jackson Singh, another fine young lad. You know, Joyce Jackson. You know, come for the interview. <laughs> he was saying very nice things about you, by the way. <laughs> <coughs> so, you know, see you, see you. So players like Jackson, uh, of course, yeah. who's one of the younger players, yeah. but. Uh, you know, you also have very senior legends like Chetri, yes. who was already a legend when you yes. came into the national yes. team. And it's not like you've had a, a less illustrious playing career. You have, like you said, you have a bar named after you in Derby County, and you're a big name in world football yourself. How do you manage uh, players who already have a high profile when you come to a country like India? Same way as others. And how did it go? They don't have any discounts. Yeah. No. Listen, the, the age doesn't matter in sport, in football. Only the quality, hmm. how committed you are, how much you are ready to give, and what's your capacity. Yeah. And I don't divide my players by the age. Yeah. It's not important to me. Are you 16, 17 or 42? Just doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, and Chetri is with us and people ask themselves, you know, for how long? Why are you asking that question yeah. while he's providing? as far as he can provide, as far as he is ready to commit himself, as far as he feels the hunger for scoring more and more, he should be here. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Why to think about when is he going to leave? Yeah. You know, for four years, every interview I received the question, yeah. what after Sunil? Why should I think about that? I'm happy that he's here. Yeah. I'm happy to help him to have more hunger for more success and to make him better. Should probably yeah. wrap him in uh, in cotton, you know, and keep him safe and fit yes. for, the, <laughs> for the Asian Cup, which I want to come to now. It is the biggest tournament that uh, India can play in. With the Asian Cup, Australia, Uzbekistan, Syria, I can, <laughs> I can see your expression already. Just getting out of that group though will be, will be such an achievement. What can we expect from the team and how are you approaching it? It's going to be a great challenge. That's all what I can tell you. It's still far away. Although we do have now good pool of players. And to be honest, between them, there is no huge difference. We cannot say on certain position, this player is far better than the other one. No, they are, they are there. Right. They are very close. So the next six months will, will be everything in their hands. Yeah. How much hunger and how much commitment they are ready to have in next six months, not playing for their clubs and obtaining training sessions with their team, but in individual free time, how much time they are ready to commit to football and to the Asian Cup, yeah. how much they are ready to improve. Because you see, Australian team, they have 20 players playing in England and Scotland. And you know what's the intensity of football yeah. they have there each three days. Yeah. <clears throat> That's one thing we're going to face. Uzbekistan team has wiped out Oman from the pitch two days ago. 3-0 was the score at the CAF competition. And I spoke to Omani coach, my good friend Branko Ivankovic, and telling me they destroyed us. In each sense of football. Then you need to think, okay, if we are <clears throat> having difficulties, physically to playing against Oman and tech technically still we are one level below them, then how is going to be against Uzbekistan? Yeah. You know, because they are physical side, they are technical side, and as unit, they are one of these dark horses for the Asian Cup, yeah. you know. So it's going to be another challenge. And Syria, of course, who is there with lots of quality in the team, also physical side and technical side. So all three teams will be the greatest challenge for our players since I'm here, Yeah, you know. But we need to be ready for such. Simple as that. But when they come to the national team, for me it's very important what kind of personalities they are. What's in behind that, apart from what I see on the football pitch. How they adapt to such unit and such level of football, which is international football, which requires much more pace, much more intensity, and far different from ISL and I League pace. Yeah. So that defines at the end are these play are the players going to still be 
invited here or not. Yeah. Gaffer, <coughs> let's talk a bit beyond football now. Yeah. Uh, I want to get to know what you're looking forward to after the Asian Cup since you've already sort of announced that you're not going to be around after yeah. that. What are your interests outside of football? Do you want to take a break or do you want to get right back into it with something else? No break, no no more breaks, you know. Although it's not going to be easy because Asian Cup is happening in January. So I will actually be a free agent in, in February, which is practically last final third of the season happening all yeah. over the world in football. And I might have a gap of two, three months there waiting for another job, but I will see. I don't think about that at the moment. I'm fully concentrated yeah. on what we need to do for the Asian yeah. Cup. I, I want to ask you, since you've already made that announcement, how do you think the players have taken it? It can work two ways. Either the players can be motivated and say, look, this is our last few months with the coach. Let's give it our all for him yeah. and let's make sure that yeah, although, we come although, on the top. Uh, I didn't say I wouldn't think to stay. Sure. I didn't say that. My contract runs out. Yeah. Let's make it clear. Yeah. You know, we are enjoying a good moment. I expect few more good games sure. from us and few more wins. Gaffer, how do you unwind outside of football? How do you relax? Uh, what are your interests outside? With my of kids football? and grandchildren. But they're far away. Of course, they are far away. But here, I don't have free time. Mm. You know, because I have 26 players here. I have my staff. I have. Uh, media interactions, I, I need to organize meetings, I need to prepare each training session, discuss with my assistants how to obtain training sessions, how to approach them. Uh, we need to analyze the screenings on the players, we need to prepare everything for the players to make it easier for them. And that's our job. So my work here is 24-7, there is no free time, yeah. actually, you know. So. You, you get you get this half an hour and it's not easy to find it. <laughs> which we really appreciate, which we really yeah. appreciate. And just to wind down, Gaffer, uh, hopefully uh, all of the effort that you're putting in with the boys uh, and on a personal level, working on your tactics, we hope that comes to fruition because the Asian Cup is, is the goal that everyone is looking forward to right now. And uh, let's hope that the team plays to its potential and the rest can take care of itself. Of course it is, but we need to, to think about that how, how ready is our team to face the pressure yeah. from the public about that competition. Pressure never brings anything good, you know, and many people react under pressure in a very difficult way. And we have too many young players here, so I don't want them to feel any pressure during the Asian Cup. I just want them to go there, do their best and enjoy the football and celebrate the football, you see. And that's kind of an environment we are creating here for them to be creative on the pitch and to enjoy the time and minutes spent yeah. on the pitch. Yeah. That's the only way they can produce good things. Yeah. You can put pressure on me, sure. not on them. Have I put pressure on you today? No. <laughs> Thank you, Igor. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you for your time, pleasure, and uh, all the best for the Asian Cup. God bless you. Come on in. <laughs> Come on in. And how many of your friends are still around this area? Are you still in touch with all of them? Yeah, yeah, many, many. First thing Rene Fernandez asked us when we entered his house was, what do you ask us? <laughs> when his eyes were going to start. It was even worse. We all have a towels in the dugout just yeah. waiting. What has Isle done to me? What all I have received from the city? I think we did an interview last year where you said you're going to take my job. <laughs> <And> <laughs> not yet, there is time. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> I'm joking, bro. Can't be mad.